Welcome to Blackbriar Gaming. Today we'll be looking at the Sons of Horus in the next video in our How to Build a Legion series. We'll cover off on four main areas. Firstly, how the box set supports the building of a Sons of Horus army. Secondly, how the Legion's special rules can be best taken advantage of on the table. Thirdly, how rights of war impact unit selection. And lastly, whether any Legion characters, warlord traits, or the advanced Legion reaction change the way you might build and play your army. Hopefully this is useful not only to those interested in the Sons of Horus, but for all Legion players, giving them an understanding of the concepts behind army building in Horus Heresy and an idea of what each Legion can bring to the table. I hope you enjoy. Just a quick note before we get into it, a subscribe and a like really helps us reach a bigger audience. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit those buttons down below. We also have just set up our first affiliate link. Uh, so that's down below. Uh, War Office over in the UK uh, are now associated with Blackbriar Gaming. So if you're interested in buying from them, hit that link down below and you'll help put uh, some proceeds back into the channel. Now, Sons of Horus, the poster children for what a legion should be. They are aggressive. They're tough. They are covered in spikes. These guys are brutal and your army will reflect this. The Sons of Horus army favors infantry and that infantry fighting up close and dirty. If you like Terminators especially, this Legion is for you. So let's get into it. First up is the box set. You can't go wrong with the box set when it comes to the Sons of Horus. They're keen on all that infantry and in particular, those 10 Cataphracti Terminators. 40 Mark VI Marines makes for a really good backbone for the rest of the army and can be used in a multitude of squads. While it would be nice to be able to kit them out as despoilers, Getting your hands on all those heresy appropriate close combat weapons and pistols isn't currently easy. Luckily, the new chain bayonets will do in a pinch and make sure that your tactical squads are still doing what Sons of Horus want to be doing, which is causing mayhem in close combat. Any Sons of Horus army will benefit from tactical or heavy sports squads of various kinds, so it really just comes down to taste. With so much elite infantry in this army, I'd be gearing my sports squads up for killing either tanks with las cannons or missiles or multitudes of weaker infantry with heavy bolters, rotor cannons or Volkite weaponry. This, uh, this weaker infantry, while it's not currently supported, we will see army books in the future for Imperial armies and militia that your elite infantry might struggle to chop through all those bodies. If you're a Terminator fan, the Sons of Horus are your legion, both due to their special rule and a particular right of war that we'll get into a bit later. Needless to say, they will put the 10 Cataphracti Terminators in this box to excellent use. If you're going down the Terminator heavy route, there's worse things you could do than even grabbing another 10 of these Cataphracti Terminators, while box splits are plentiful and competitively priced. While the Forge World Justeran Terminators look great, a few top knots from 40k Space Marines, for instance, uh, 40k Chaos Space Marines, you could get some, and some cheeky spiky bits that you can make easily enough from various methods, will turn your generic Cataphracti Terminators into these elite lads very easily. Terminators, especially of the Cataphracti nature, generally need transports. Even if a certain right of war and its outflanking shenanigans is chosen, coming onto the battlefield and a transport gives you so much more protection and reach, even if you can't then assault on that turn. So a Spartan is almost a must for a Sons of Horus army, and this box set has you sorted. Sons of Horus Dreadnoughts are particularly terrifying in close combat, so the box set Contemptor is a must-have, and I don't think Sons of Horus players will stop at just one. Imagine managing to get your hands on a second Dreadnought Power Fist, maybe swapping with a mate who's going to double up on auto cannons or such, uh, would be worthwhile for that extra attack. I'm really interested in how we're going to get our hands on Dreadnought weapons. Um, there's lots of extra weapons in the box, for instance, but I'm pretty convinced there's this extra little little shoulder bit that you need to use on all the Legion-specific Dreadnoughts, for instance. So I'm waiting to see what the solution is for that across the community and, and how we do it. Uh, 3D printing might be the answer to that, and that's absolutely fine too. The Praetors work just fine for a Sons of Horus army, in particular that axe-wielding monster. He's got deep Gathonian vibes and would be great as a Praetor or in any number of consoles in a Sons of Horus army. Uh, for one of the 16th Legion Rites of War, you need to take a Master of Signals, so sticking some gadgets and antennae on one of those miniatures will definitely do the job. Overall, the box set is a win for Sons of Forest players. Now let's have a chat about their special rules. This special rule is intense. 
And while I don't think it was the best narrative choice the design team could have made to represent the 16th Legion, it certainly packs a punch. For such an aggressive legion, their legion-wide special rule is actually really defensive. So let's have a quick look at it. It reads, During a turn in which a unit made up entirely of models with the Legiones Astartes Sons of Horus special rule successfully charges, or are successfully charged, the strength of all melee attacks made against any model in that unit does not have, that does not have vehicle type suffers a minus one. Models with the vehicle unit type and this special rule instead inflict an additional three hits for a total of 1d6 plus three or 2d6 plus three if it's a super heavy vehicle on units composed of models that do not have the vehicle unit type when conducting a ramming attack. This is the kind of rule you build around, people. It's just that good. And it gives Sons of Horus a decent advantage over most other legions in combat. So who is benefiting from this? Anyone that can fight in close combat, obviously. Infantry, Dreadnoughts, and to a lesser extent, your cavalry units, who just don't crank out quite enough attacks at their points cost to make this really worthwhile for this purpose. Uh, vehicles are getting their RAM bonus, which is not incons inconsequential, I should say. Essentially almost doubling the effectiveness of ramming for this legion, which is, which is kind of crazy. There's just something so satisfying about a wall of rhinos crushing your enemy as they flee off the table. But the main one here is, is not the ramming. That's just a nice little plus. A big, a big plus though, I kind of think. But the most one here is the minus one strength in close combat. So when looking at those infantry choices, anything with two wounds are definitely the biggest winners here. Why you ask? Well, when it comes down to melee weapons that could be causing instant death, the majority of them are doing so due to being strength eight against your commonplace toughness for Marine. Power fists. Chain Fists, Thunder Hammers, and their like are double the regular Marine strength of four, taking it to that really important eight, and instant deathing all of your expensive two-wound infantry. Not so for Sons of Horus. All of your opponent's Power Fists, Chain Fists, and Thunder Hammers, carried by those of Marine-like disposition, and notably in the turn that they charge or are charged, will be striking at strength seven. This is huge. It means your two wound infantry are no longer subject to instant death in any turn that you or your opponent charged. To put this into context, in a Terminator on Terminator matchup where you're both swinging with power fists, your Sons of Horus boys are essentially doing twice the amount of damage or put in another way, are twice as survivable. It also means that any feel no pain mitigation you might have is now not being negated because of course feel no pain special rule can't be taken against instant death weapons. In an addition, where I think Power Fist will be very popular to take out Dreadnoughts, mostly, uh, specifically because of all the two wound elite infantry as well, this special rule, this special rule is just fantastic. So, what are we taking in an army to make sure we're taking best advantage of this? We're taking Terminators, we're taking Veterans, and we're taking Characters. Elite Legion Infantry, which for the 16th Legion means Reaver Attack Squads are going to be great. Uh, Next up, we're going to focus on that feel no pain bonus because we're going to get them much more often than other legions. So apothecaries are the obvious choice who are naturally drawn to bigger units to get bang for your buck. So we're talking about big squads of despoilers, assault squads and reaver attack squads all benefit greatly from this extra damage mitigation, at least in close combat, where we're of course not negating instant death from shooting, but hey, better than nothing. Throw a couple of dreadnoughts into the mix who very much enjoy only being wounded by power fists on a four plus, and we're starting to see an army form. So what did the rights of war bring to the table for the Sons of Horus? Let's take a look. The Sons of Horus have two very straightforward rights of war. We've got their Black Reaving and the Long March. One right of war likes Terminators and the other likes Reavers and, and Terminators. First up, the Black Reaving. It reads, Models with the Sons of Horus special rule taken as part of a detachment using this right of war gain the Rage 2 special rule when they successfully charge an enemy unit which is already locked in combat with one or more units or an enemy unit that is the target of at least one other charge in the same charge subphase. So essentially you're getting uh, an extra attack on top of the extra attack you would normally get when you charge into close combat as long as that enemy unit is already engaged with one of your units. Reaver attack squads may be chosen as troop choices for detachments using this right of war, and when chosen as troop choices, gain the line unit subtype. So important, very important, really great here. 
And lastly, just cause, just cause you needed a little bit more, Justeran Terminators chosen as part of a detachment using this right of war gain the deep strike special rule. Okay, limitations. Uh, essentially, you've got to take a master of signal. Sure. And you have to have more fast attack choices than heavy support choices. So what are the pros here? Sons of Horus like combat. The Black Reaving gives you an extra attack when you charge into combat. It's a match made in the shredded meat of your enemies. Attacks aren't exactly a dime a dozen in Heresy, so getting a cheeky extra one for your entire army when charging in seems pretty good. Noting, of course, when it only kicks off when you charge into an enemy that's already engaged with one of your units, but there's ways we'll build this into our army. We've already talked about how much we love two wind infantry for the Sons of Horus. Well, now you get to take them as troops choices in the form of your Reaver attack squads. And much more importantly, they get the line subtype. Big deal, big deal, people. Not all rights of war are generous enough to do this. Uh, just look at the Dark Angel rights of war, for instance, the many that they have and the absolute lack of the line subtype uh, throughout all of them. So getting that line piece is really nice. And just for that little cherry on top, the Just There and Terminators getting Deep Strike, very nice. We know Deep Striking is going to be fantastic in this edition, as long as you're planning around it, uh, with the ability to pin enemy units and then charge into combat on the turn you arrive. So having it on such a slow but choppy unit, really nice. What are the cons here? Um, having to take a Masters of Signal is a bit of a pain. Why is this, you might ask? And I think quite a few people have missed this. Yes, he does cool reserve things. Uh, yes, he makes your units braver. He helps you shoot better. He's just an all round great guy. Well, yes and no. He also comes with this pesky Vox Disruptor array, which is super powerful, but potentially making your opponent's Deep Strike Assault disordered, but also just as likely to make your own Deep Strike Assault disordered. That's on a one, two or three. Suddenly after your first unit Deep Striking, the rest of the units are potentially disordered. Now, we just got super excited about Just Aaron Terminator's Deep Striking, so how do we get around this? Well, this is my advice. If you only take a single unit to Deep Strike, you make sure your assault can't be disordered, and you get around the negative side effects, which I assume is what the design is intended here. So you take a single big unit of these spiky guys, you can take up to 12 Just Aaron in a squad, if you're, if you're feeling particularly obnoxious, and you just leave it at that, that's it. The, the one squad, you can chuck a character in there as well because it still counts as the, the one squad, they can't be disordered. So that's that. Um, the fast attack over heavy sport, it's workable. It's not a big deal. It, worst case scenario, if you want to open up those heavy support slots, you just get a bunch of cheap land, land speeders, right? And just chuck them in. So the world's not ending. There are a lot of impacts for army building on this one. So it's quite in depth. This right of war is doing a lot of what we've already discussed around the Sons of Horus. They've got big units of close combat monsters, the obvious choice here being Reaver attack squads, especially because you can take them in squads of 20. They're such a flexible unit, and to have them in the troops with the line subtype makes them really worth taking, whereas as an elite choice, they're a bit meh. At least two big units of these guys, I think that's a must. Three feels better. I want to kit them out. Uh, mostly with close combat options, but kit them out how you like. I think leaving the expensive shooting stuff behind in this right of war is, is the better choice because you're going to want to be running uh, when you're not close enough to the enemy to assault. Now to support these units, I'd go straight to an Apothecarian detachment, putting one in each of these squads. As I said before, you're going to be getting feel no pain in close combat more often than not, uh, mainly because you won't be subject to instant death nearly as much as other Marines might be. You could go either way with transports, there's certainly merit to taking various types of land raiders to deliver these squads, but this is a lot of points, especially because if you want to take a unit of 20 with a character, it has to be a Spartan that's carrying them. And that thing costs a lot. So it's already a pretty elite army. I think I'm going to leave the land raiders at home and rely on those two wounds, horde-like numbers, and the feel no pain saves to see the ravers safely across the table. We've already talked about our big single unit of Just Aaron Terminators. Take as many as you want, up to 12, and hold them in reserve to deep strike. Taking the Sons of Horus Primarch Lupercal in this right of war works just fine, and you could do a lot worse than putting him in deep strike with those Terminators. He has deep strike natively, so he's good to go. Now this might seem like overkill, but you can always split him off from the unit in subsequent turns. Horus is expensive though, so if you don't have the points for him, 
Abaddon is a great alternative and packs a mean punch. Um, he does actually give a unit deep strike, so I feel like we're missing out on something there because we're, we've already got it. But you know what? That's fine. It's nice and fluffy, hangs out with his Just Aaron, has a great time. As the Terminators and character are deep striking as a single squad, it doesn't cause any issues with the potential for a disordered deep strike assault that we discussed earlier with that Masters of Signal. Now you remember that the rage bonus of the Rite of War only goes off if you're charging a unit that is already engaged. So for each Reaver squad, I would also take a 10 man squad of cheap, basic assault marines. These guys support their respective Reaver squads by jumping into assault beforehand, soaking up overwatch, and making sure your Reavers are getting access to that sweet rage special rule. You'll want a unit for your Masters of Signals to hang out with. Heavy sports squads are always a great choice for this, benefiting the most from his buffed ballistic skill. A squad of 10 LAS cannons gives you the potential to pop those heavy transports so that your Reavers can get to the fleshy contents without any issues in assault. This squad is also good for putting wounds onto enemy contempted dreadnoughts who are still putting instant death onto your two wound infantry with their cheeky strength nine fists. Even after the Sons of Horror special rule kicks in, dreadnoughts are still pretty scary for your, uh, for your two wound infantry. A couple of tactical squads to support your backline and hold midfield objectives is never a bad option. You've got chain bayonets on them for sure, if just for the aesthetics, if nothing else. Don't forget they also get rage, not just your Reaver attack squads. So they can definitely still do work in Assault, even if they're tactical squads. You can upgrade these guys with Bane Strike Bolters. Um, it gives them, I think, 6 plus Breaching. It's, it's kind of good, I guess. But 5 points per model gets pretty expensive for a unit that you'd probably rather see in combat. Taking fast attack choices is fine, though harder than it looks in this army, as they aren't great close combat focused fast attack options and we don't really want to bring anything that wants to deep strike. So this is only a concern if you've decided to bring some land raiders along for your reavers, and you need to open up those heavy support slots, as reavers don't have land raiders as dedicated transports. I think, uh, great choice here, look, couple of land speeders, super cheap, right? But I think a really nice option here is some outriders or jet bikes with melter guns or multi-melters respectively, noting that they're twin linked on both of these squads. This provides another unit to open up those opponent's transports, and to finish off those Dreadnoughts of the Laz Cannon squad weakened. 10 Laz Cannons will not kill a Contempted Dreadnought, people, as crazy as that sounds. So having these little units to pop in and do those last couple of wounds, super handy. These units can also be used in a pinch to charge in before your Reaver squads, in case your Sacrificial Assault squad have copped it while you're, uh, while you're bounding across the battlefield. So that's that. That is the Black Reaving Rite of War. Now, if you're more into Terminators rather than the Reavers, then the Long March is the Rite of War for you. I've seen a bunch of people asking online which Legion does Terminators best, and you could certainly do a lot worse than Sons of Horus running this Rite of War. So, what does it read? Let's see. Units made up entirely of models with Legiones as study special rule and the infantry or dreadnought unit type that are part of this detachment using this Rite of War gain plus one to their movement characteristics in the movement phase. There's just, there's so many words. I'm going to stop reading it. You get plus one to your movement most of the time. Doesn't impact for charging. Boo. All right, next up, Legion Cataphracto Terminator squads, Legion Tartarus Terminator squads, and just Theron Terminators may be chosen as non-compulsory troops in a detachment using this right of war. And lastly, and this is kind of the cool bit, any Legion Cataphracto Terminator squads, Tartarus squads, or just Theron squads selected as troops choices gain outflank. Very nice. Now, for those that don't know what outflank is, go have a read. Essentially, it's a reserve option where you come in from one of the board edges and you get to charge when wa wandering onto the table. Super nice. Um, limited in how far you can move on, especially because Terminators are slow, but you've got that little plus one movement blip. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, honestly, I think this Rite of War is a bit hit or miss. It's like the designers decided having Terminators as, as troops was really huge, so they then went a bit tame on the rest of the benefits. Outflank can be really huge and can be really impactful, but a canny opponent is going to shut it down, especially when the outflanking units are slow-moving Terminators. The plus one movement was, I assume, meant to overcome this, but it's not exactly blowing my mind. Sometimes though, look, it all comes down to an inch, right? So it's better than nothing, <clears throat> and it's going to hopefully get your Terminators a little further where they need to be. As I mentioned, Terminators as troops, that's what people are here for. You can take lots, you take them all, but 
you will then need still compulsory troops that are not Terminators. Can't go, for, can't go full Terminators. Bit disappointing is what it is. Finally, the outflank piece. So, if due to the mission, the battlefield, or you're facing an opponent that doesn't really know what to expect, you can definitely get off some serious assault action happening off a cheeky outflank. And when you do, this right of war is going to feel great. If your opponent manages to redeploy or maneuver away from your outflank entry point, and you do have to uh, signify it at the start of the game, it's going to feel significantly less impactful while your Terminators have to stomp their way across the table. But we'll get on to mitigating this as we talk. Now, the con here, you've got to be a traitor. Sorry, Loken, this isn't for you. <clears throat> Loken, Loken only does short marches. And no units with the heavy subtype unless they're starting in reserve or on transports. Now, there's actually a lot of units with the heavy subtype. So keep this in mind as you try to build out this right of war. But look, honestly, if you really want a heavy support squad, for instance, with that heavy type in there, or many of the other units, you just chuck them in a, in a rhino, right? 35 point tax, you can still bring them along. What this really impacts is things like Leviathans, for instance. Um, you don't really want your Leviathan in reserves for obvious reasons. It's short ranged. If it comes marching on the table in turn three, it's not gonna do that much. So this, this right of war, no Leviathans for you. So what's the impact? What's the impact on army building here? <clears throat> First up, I wanna see at least three units of Terminators coming on from outflank to make this right of war really worth it. I wanna see one each of Cataphracti, Tartarus, and Just Darren, just because you can. But all these units are going to start tripping over each other while moving onto the battlefield. So taking at least one of them, probably the Just Darren, just because just it makes sense, they get the sweet ride. I wanna take the Just Darren in a Spartan to make sure they can move onto the table a little further, try and chase down some opponents if they've tried to move away from your outflank entry. And just so you're not clogging yourself up in that outflank entry zone. Just remember though, they can't assault on the turn they arrive from outflank if they're in a transport. Point for point, just Darren, they're just fantastic. Outperforming regular Terminators across the board and likely well worth the extra points. So if you choose to go all just Darren for this army, you could definitely make worse, worse decisions than that. Taking Horus in this right of war isn't as intuitive as the Black Reaving, as Horus, as far as I'm aware, can't join the Terminators in outflank. So you'd need to dedicate another expensive unit to guard him and another expensive transport to get him into the fight. His army-wide handing out of stab stubborn is also a lot less impactful here, as Terminators have their pseudo-stubborn effect with the inexorable, inexorable special rule. So Horus, mm, I don't think he belongs in this right of war. I actually quite like Malagurst for this right of war. Firstly, because his model is just everything I want in a heresy miniature. It's so nice. And secondly, because he does some great objective controlling and leadership buffing while you wait for your outflankers to arrive. I think I put him in a big unit of Reavers to pincer the enemy between these guys and your Terminators. With Mal it also gives those Reavers line, which in this right of war, they of course do not have. With Malgurst, this unit can't run, so maybe give them a bunch of plasma guns to lay down some decent firepower while they advance up the table. Another HQ choice I really want in this army is Master of Signals. <laughs> Ironic, because I didn't really want it in the Black Reaving Ride of War. Now, Master of Signals are great in an outflanking army, providing a vital reservary role for units that have to spend a turn or two catching up with the enemy after entering the battlefield. His disruption to dip, Deep Strike here can only hurt your opponent and not you, which is really nice, noting that you could Deep Strike, but you, you won't. Uh, there's a multitude of squads you can pair him with. Uh, something that shoots good is always a better choice, noting that we can't take the heavy sports squad here unless it's in a Rhino, which, which you can do. You can do that, that's fine. Just means first turn, you'll only be snap firing, which kind of sucks. So it defeats the purpose. So put him in, put him in something else, maybe some, some tactical support squads. Now, let's be honest, Master of Signals, great choice here, but it's also a pretty safe choice, pretty boring choice, if you will. So if you're feeling a little edgier, looking for something a little spicier, a Legion Librarian can do real work for this army. Now, our center of gravity here revolves around our outflanking Terminators being able to get the jump on enemy units. The enemy, however, has a turn or two to try and get out of the way. So what better way to achieve our aims than to pin the enemy in place? Making sure they're not only within assault range of our outflanking Terminators, but also can't perform some potentially brutal reactions while we march on the board. I'll let you read up on the powers themselves, but the telepathy psychic discipline is out of control. 
I think it'll be almost an auto-include for certain assault-based armies, and this one could certainly use the help. I'm keen to flank Malagurst and his Reaver squad that we talked about before with a couple of uh, cheaper despoiler squads to provide some more line troops, because your Terminators, even though they're troops, don't have that line subtype. So we need some more line units to make sure we're getting those objectives. Despoilers are great too, because they are, check out their special rules. They, they actually, they get tougher um, and better when they're near objectives. They also make sure you're getting the most out of Malagurst's, Malagurst's, there we go, Legion Standard as well, because he's, he's got that big flag. Make sure you've got some units around to take advantage of it. Finally, a Talon of three Contempted Dreadnoughts runs with this second force, the, the first force being your outflanking Terminators, uh, to really make sure your opponent thinks hard about whether they want to be closer to a bunch of Dreadnoughts or a bunch of Terminators. The plan is to push your opponent into making a bad decision and force them back towards your outflanking entry point if they try to move away. And that is the Sons of Horus, Rites of War. Two distinct ways to build an army, all of it involving running down your opponents, tearing them apart with packs of angry sea green marines. Now, while there's some great characters in the Sons of Horus lineup, most of which I've already mentioned, none of them have any significant impact on army building. Same, same, Warlord traits, which are mostly about turning your characters into unstoppable killing machines. A quick shout out, though, to the Dark Emissary, which is the console upgrade for the Sons of Horus. If you're planning on running an allied detachment as part of a trader army, Sons of Horus make for an excellent choice because they can take this console. What it does is make the Sons of Horus allied detachment just completely stubborn, just a, just a big old stubborn block of, uh, of Sons of Horus. So if you want to go down a bit of allied detachment rule, uh, you know, rules, methods, ways of building an army, uh, the Dark Emissary and Sons of Horus, great way to go. But for now, that will bring us to the end of our Legion build for the Sons of Horus. Plenty to think about there. Thank you so much for watching. How are you planning to build your Sons of Horus army? Are you planning to go with the Legion Rites of War or another direction entirely? Let us know in the comments below. Importantly, make sure to keep rolling those dice and getting hyped for heresy.